Principals Board of Education Tax Rate Hearing, uh, August 24, 2021. Uh, Shelly, first up. Okay. Um, we're just presenting the hearing tonight, all the documents that we posted out publicly, and we chose to, to post them uh, instead of paying for the advertisement in the Globe, we have the option to, to post them in three public places. So we chose the City Hall and uh, City of Duquesne City Hall and the Dunaweg City Hall. Um, what we are seeing though with the assessed valuation, uh, this was a reassessment year. And so the assessed valuation, we've gone over the 1 billion in assessed valuation for the school, for this area, uh, which is like seven, 790.7 7 million in real estate and approximately 264 million in personal property. So overall that increase is 66.5 million or 6.744%. Um, we, the state comes in and they, we have a limit in a assessment year on what we can, what rate we can set. And it's based on the assessed value, how much that has increased plus the CPI that has gone up. They set the CPI this year at 1.4%. So with this assessed valuation, we're projecting 38.5 million in local effort. And that's based on a 3.66 tax rate, which we will, I'll go into more details of that during the uh, actual session. Um, but this rate is a decrease prior year of 3.64 uh, cents on $100 of assessed valuation. So even, but even with this decrease, it's total new revenue of 2.4 million and one point, but worth 1 million 43,000 of that is due to construction and the increase in the personal property. So um, the state auditor's office does supply the calculation. We have our own spreadsheet as well um, that we have that calculation. Uh, we're very comfortable with this again I said the CPI index was set at 1.4 percent so um, but I we open this up to any comments that the public may have or the board may have on the CPI is that on a national or is that regional you know I the state sets that so the audit state auditor's office and I couldn't tell you if that is everywhere or what. <laughs> I, the CPI index is all over the country, but it's normally done either on a national basis or on a regional. But that's why I'm asking which uh -huh. one do they use. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer, but I can check into that for okay. you. Do it, please. I think it's a plus when we can recommend a lower tax base and still have more revenue than we had the previous year. So thank you for sharing that. If there are no further questions, anybody? Okay, let's adjourn to the regular session. And just a little bit here. Okay, now we'll uh, we'll call the meeting to order for the regular session, Joplin Schools Board of Education, August 24, 2001. Roll call, please pass. Sheriff Tremont. Here. Derek Andrews. Present. Dr. Joseph. Here. John Hearn. Present. Riley Harwell. Here. Uh, Frank Jordan. Present. Jeff Cope. Present. Thank you. If you could please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, first up is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion for approval? Motion to approve. So I'll second. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Derek. Uh, please vote. Yes. 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 That motion passes. Great. Okay. Uh, first up, we've got uh, some celebrations. I'd like to share those first. So here we go. All right. We had our uh, Joplin Schools Health Benefit and Retail Therapy Fair. I think that shot me. Retail Therapy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, it's an employee focus on health and benefits. So we had more than 500 Joplin school employees enjoy the sixth annual health benefits and retail therapy fair this year. The staff were offered COVID vaccines, free and reduced cost health screenings, and information on employee benefits. 
Kitties also enjoy shopping, prize giveaways, and food trucks. Uh, Dorothy Alton's uh, Drop in School Development Specialist organized the event along with the HR team. So it's great to, to share with them before school starts all the benefits got of being a Joplin Schools uh, member. Uh, next up, we had a surprise. Our Eagle Nation uh, life changer. You may have remembered at the end of last year, uh, Ms. Sue Day, our beloved uh, Joplin High School counselor, um, was chosen as the regional life changer. Well, uh, we were. she was surprised to learn that she had been chosen for the life changer of the year by the National Life Group. So as the grand prize for Miss Day and Joplin Schools will each be awarded $5,000, the entire $10,000 will be donated to Joplin Schools for scholarship in honor of educators that have changed lives of students. So that was the first thing she did. <laughs> picture there we had her back for the, the back to school well and she thought she was just there to say welcome and that was really the unveiling of her national uh, national award so appreciate that okay next up uh, bright futures joplin was very pleased to receive a donation of more than 2,000 servings of pre-packaged shelf stable foods from national food group and zz's to support joplin school snack programs zz's donates five percent of their annual profits to organizations that work to relieve food insecurity. Uh, Sarah Coyne, Bright Futures Joplin coordinator, noted, we are honored that ZZ's has chosen to help our local kids. Everything we provide in our stack, snack packs is made available through partnerships, fundraising, donations, and grants. So thank you guys. Uh, next up, uh, that is uh, the Tamco-Tron. So it's now up. <laughs> so fans couldn't miss the Joplin School's new video board, the Tamco-Tron. Uh, at the football jamboree held last Friday. The official ribbon cutting is scheduled for Friday, September 3rd at 6.30, preceding the district's first home game uh, against Nixa. Photos can't do it justice. Come and see the big board in action for yourself. And a reminder that was all community funded uh, for that board to, uh, uh, to celebrate our students there. And we also would like to invite any board members that can be present that night for that ribbon cutting. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, those are our celebrations. Um, we can jump to the finance committee. Uh, Dr. Joseph and I met uh, with Shelly. We went over the, the tax decrease. I think we're uh, uh, pretty excited for that, and she's already shared a little bit more, but uh, now the school started, we'll, uh, we'll start the new cycle of review and, and tweaking of the budget as necessary. Anything you want to add, Mike? No, I think we're uh -huh. just financially very looking very good right we're now. In a good, we're in a good spot, good I appreciate that. Okay, uh, next up, uh, oh, um, one other note uh, that I wanted to share. Um, after our last meeting, um, when we made our decision on how we're going to have our protocols come back to school, there were some um, uh, re correspondence from Misha, and I had an opportunity to talk with uh, uh, Dr. Moss and, and Matt and Kyle, our athletic directors, this morning, and kind of to summarize what, what happened. Um, Misha has a concern with the quarantine plans uh, for our district only related to participating or attending interscholastic contests or there'll be close contact. Um, so um, what we have looked at is that coaches um, need some direction on how to handle uh, close contacts and practices, meetings, uh, etc. outside of the contest. So some of the activities lend themselves to allowing uh, masking, like maybe orchestra, choir, speech, and debate, but others like running football and basketball, uh, more problematic of, of participating uh, while masking. So we're going to, at this time, we're going to leave this to the coaches to make the best decision for the athletes and the teams on how they can um, work with the students. If the coaches cannot have close contact students at practice, um, they can't socially distance them, keep them away from, uh, uh, from the other students, then they're going to share their workout recommendations with the students' parents that way, if the students want to uh, work, work out and stay in condition while they're in quarantine, if they're asymptomatic, uh, they would have that, uh, that information from the coach to be able to do that. Um, and then, of course, the students that are fully vaccinated um, uh, are not subject to quarantine. And then students, uh, as we had shared uh, last week, that uh, can be released from quarantine after 10 days um, with, after last contact with symptoms without testing or after seven days after receiving a negative test and that's from the Missouri Department of Health. So the intent of the board was to um, ensure that we don't limit the opportunities for our students to participate. Um, and this is a way that we can do that. And if we need to bring this back up at our next meeting, when we've had more time, 
Um, we, we got the feedback at uh, 4, 415 yesterday, so it was a little quick to, to put something together, but we can address that if we need to uh, at our next meeting. So uh, next up, superintendent's data report. Okay, and the first item in the superintendent's data report is our summer school report, Ms. Dr. Mwangi. And I see Chris Bozart coming to the table. Thank he was you. our yes, summer Chris. school director. Yes, Chris Bozart is here to share with us. Um, he was the director of our summer school program this year. You may have remembered bringing some items to you of some specific things that we were doing to address that. And so he's just going to give a quick summary and share a few words with you to kind of recap summer school. Okay. Good evening, guys. Thanks for letting me be here tonight. So hopefully this will be another celebration. Let's uh, kind of kind of piggyback on what uh, Jeff was talking about earlier. So just kind of a little background. So I've had the privilege of being the summer school director the last two summers. And, uh, and one of the things that we, that I've realized in this position is uh, anytime that you take 11 elementaries and combine them into four campuses and take three middle schools into one campus and all the other moving parts, we do, we have summer school at Beacon, we run things at Roy S. Woods, we have things going on in early childhood. Um, it takes every single department we have working together. And so I just want to pat all of those directors and, and be on the back because we're talking about special services and food service and technology and building over grounds. So we're talking, Dave and I have conversations in January as to even what buildings we can use, based on what that outline is going to look like and what, what projects we have going on. So those are those are conversations that the truth is probably the bulk of what I do is between January and May and the former school and response. And it's just all those logistical things. but. The, it, it's uh, it's a group effort, right? It takes a ton of people to get that to, to pull together, and, and we have some amazing people in the job. So I just want to appreciate uh, and recognize those folks that help that come together every year. So we have some celebrations here for this particular summer that I would like to share. And oh, I have a clicker. You're, a, wow. you're wow. official. official <laughs> so the big thing that was different for this summer that we did not have uh, last year was field trips were back on the table, and and so we got to. Uh, all of our buildings, elementary through middle school, participated in various things. We went to ocean adventures, different park activities, um, bowling alley, skating rinks. Our middle school kids got to go fishing at, uh, they were at Walter Woods Conservation Area. And then we also, this was probably the highlight of our field trips, was our middle school kids got to go to Murfreesburg and they got to do more of a um, scavenger hunt through there and learn uh, some of the history of Joplin. And that actually, that came out of just a quick little news piece we did on summer school. And, and I made a comment about field trips. And the next day I had an email from uh, folks that coordinate all these tours and said, we would love to have your kids come. And I immediately wow. shared that with summer school principals and they jumped on that. So I just think it's pretty amazing our kids got a chance to do those things again this summer. Um, that also helps with attendance when kids have some incentives to come and do some fun activities. Uh, so those are certainly some celebrations that we had uh, for this summer. So we're gonna take a little bit of a look at numbers. And so we're gonna go back three years. So we're gonna look at what our average daily attendance was back in 2019 and kind of compare 1920 and 21. Uh, and this is something Sarah and I talked about to kind of see what our numbers look like uh, before our, our closure in the spring of 20 and how that had kind of recovered the last, this last year. So as you can see, K through eight, our average daily attendance was over 1300 kids. Uh, which is that's per day, so that's incredible. That's over a 23 day window uh, of summer school. And then our high school credits, we, we had almost 350 credits earned during that summer. So if you look at 2020, those numbers dropped significantly. And we also, there was a lot of uh, adjusting on the fly. I'm not sure how, what summer school was going to look like at that point in time. And we went ahead and did you know, in person summer school, which was amazing. And our kids came back. I'm ready, to, ready to be in the classroom because you can see those credits in the high school dropped significantly and obviously our daily attendance and we saw that attendance over that 23 day period it dropped the last week was probably half of what it had been in previous weeks and so we saw a huge decline towards the end this year our numbers were back up significantly so we were not quite back to where we were uh, three years ago but we're we're back up over 1100 kids a day and then look at our high school credits. So we went from, so if you think back in 2019, uh, we were about 350 credits. And so we know that number is probably a little bit inflated because we had some secondary kids who had some gaps to fill and some makeup to, you know, there's a lot of credit recovery in there. If you kind of break that down, even as far as the credits earned, um, we had 329 credits of that was credit recovery. That's both of the virtual school 
and at Joplin High School. So that was a, a huge bulk of, of what those credits were, but it's also just a testament to the hard work that our kids and our teachers put in to help get those kids caught up. So those are some numbers that really celebrate uh, but I think we're, we'll move it in the right direction and hope those numbers continue to increase. And one thing with the high school credits that I'll just point out, um, the past two years, our kids have been more transient just on homeschool, in person, you know, switching mid-semester. All of those decisions impact high school credits. So something that we really, really pushed this past summer was not just credit recovery of helping our kids get caught up, but it was also who is not on track with credits. They may have never taken the course before. And so we really tried to get those kids in to get those courses taken that maybe for one reason or another on transfers, um, they weren't at those magic numbers. We like to see them at freshman, sophomore, junior years. Um, so that also contributes to that, that high number. No? So the other thing that we really kind of shifted our focus towards the last two summers is, so we think about two years ago when we, when we came back in June to have summer school, we knew our kids were going to have some pretty significant learning gaps, and we knew we wanted to get um, as much individual learning as we could, and so we piloted a program called Exact Path. I think you guys have probably heard of that because we've been some things district-wide since, but that was really the first time that our, all of our district-wide staff had seen that program, and we got to kind of use that as a small sample size with our summer school kids. And we learned a lot through that. It was a great way to kind of dip our toe in the water, so to speak, with, with that program. Um, and then this year, we did the same thing with 95% group, um, which is another district initiative that we were all rolling out this year. So kind of excited that we've been able to use summer school at, as a way to kind of implement some interventions for our kids that maybe we haven't seen in previous years, but also to, I think, is my feedback from my teachers is if I can use that even in a, in a short 23 day window during summer school, I feel way more confident when I implement that come, come fall. And so in those summer school teachers can also um, use use that uh, experience to then help train their peers and, and those students even that are more familiar with the terminology and, and if it's a, a digital platform, you know, just to be able to use that program. So we've got a little bit of data here too from 95% group one. Can show I ask you about the exact path yes. first? Yes, sir. Now, it, is it, uh, and I think I've heard it, but I wanted to make sure, so you'll, you'll have each student individually take their assessment, and then the exact path will help them with their individual gaps so that they can, you don't spend time working on things that they already have achieved, it's focusing that, but it's individual per student, not per class, not per grade, but second, each individual yeah. student. Second through eighth grade tied to their NWEA assessment. Okay. So um, they're get all getting ready to take that assessment starting next week. Uh, and then the beautiful thing of our tech department has worked really hard to help us integrate. So within 24, 48 hours, that testing data gets in, it's automatically synced, and within a day or two, those paths are updated every time the kid tests, those paths are updated. Okay, thank you. You're exactly right. And, and the awesome thing is, is to that point, you could have a second grader who's, who's above grade level and maybe working on fourth grade content. But the same thing, if, if there's a gap somewhere in that reading or math, learning for them, and they may be working on that school, even at a lower level. So you're exactly right. It's tailor fit to that individual student. Okay. Excellent, thank you. So with 95% group, um, which was new to us this summer, we did a pre and post test. And so this is, Libby put some preliminary data together uh, for me, her and Eric worked on this. And, and this is just kind of looking at what we did with our first, second, and third year. So the way that we rolled this out for summer is we had these workbooks that you have in front of me here, and these were called booster bundles, and they were specifically designed to, to help kids get caught up. Um, this was something 95% group put together um, with a summer school model in mind. And so these, when we say rising first, second, and third graders, we're talking about students who were K-1 and 2 during the regular school year, who then were moving into the first, second, or third grade summer school class. And so we, we administered a pretest for all those students. And then at the very end, that last week, we went ahead and did a post-test. So this is designed to be a 25-day curriculum. Of course, we only had 23 instructional days um, in there. But even just in that very small window, if you look at where uh, our percentages were in terms of student achievement at the beginning and at the end of summer school, uh, that's, that's pretty incredible to be able to see that much growth in, in a pretty short window of time. So we felt like that was definitely a celebration. And I think that also helped with our staff to help validate this program is, is something that we can 
we can really get excited about in the fall. And I know feedback from my staff is used there are some schools fantastic. So uh, it's we're sort very, of very explicit instruction. Yeah. And I, I think the outcome with a short summer school window, explicit instruction matters. And it does have an impact um, on our students' proficiency. Excellent. Any questions? Yeah. Congratulations. I mean, it was a great summer. It was, was a, a super summer. summer. It was super summer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next up is Shelly again with health and dental plan updates. And then that will segue into financial statements. Okay. I would like to take a moment and introduce, we have Sarah Lopez joining us tonight. She's our new director of accounting. She's in the back there. So um, we're so thankful to have Welcome. her on, on board. She uh, was previously in our accounts payable, was kind of the lead in the accounts payable. So um, she does have her, her accounting degree. So she, now she's kind of moving over into the director of accounting. So thankful to have her. On the health and dental tonight, this is just, uh, the first month of the year. So the... Uh, we are seeing a little bit of an increase in uh, expenditures. Normally we see that in the summertime as teachers take that time to do their, um, any doctor's appointments and things that they have. So we, this month in, of July, we spent around 715,000 of our total 7.4 million budget. But again, that's, that's not totally out, uh, out of the normal range. Uh, Really, not a lot of other things to, to report on that. Everything else is pretty pretty standard. So, but I'd happy be happy to answer any questions you may have. And if not, we'll move on to the financial. And um, on the financial statements, the balance sheet you'll still see the accrued items showing up on the balance sheet as we still have the month of August that um, is showing that accrued those accrued payrolls out there. But if we'll go, Eric. Yeah, to the condensed financial statement. Down at the bottom of that, you'll see the beginning balances for the fund balances for fiscal year 22. So those have now been updated um, that show our restricted, restricted income, um, the unrestricted capital balance of 15 million. Now that change tweaked a little bit. I think I, I went in and actually had um, noticed some additional expenditures that hadn't been coded correctly on the building. So I, those, that's a little bit different from what I was reporting last month. Um, but overall, our, our fund balances, that shows where we started the year at. As far as activity for July, um, everything is, well, the revenues, you'll, you'll notice a little bit of increase there. Part of that on the local estate is due to last July, we were seeing the withholds at the state level for uh, Prop C money and the um, basic formula money. So this year, you know, we, we don't have the withhold. So that's that's what that increase on those uh, comparing to prior year relates to. On the expenditure side, the capital projects fund, that is mainly the um, Kelsey Norman addition, addition of 594,000 was paid out, uh, Dover Hill 183,000. And then there was the LED lighting got paid in July, so two hundred fifty-six thousand. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, hearing none, we will move on to our construction update. And I said, Chad and Aaron are here. Oh, Chad is deferring to <coughs> <you>. <laughs> 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 we can blame that one on chat in there. There we go. Okay. So first off, we're going to start with Kelsey Norman. 
in really good shape right now. Um, if you, if anybody has walked through, we have started interior painting this week. Um, ceiling grid starting to go in right now. Tile in the bathrooms is almost complete. And exterior concrete is nearing completion as well. So that project is moving very, very well. I would say that in the next seven weeks, we'll be able to complete the building and turn it over to you guys to use. Excellent. So, a wonderful project. It's going very well. They're a little bit outdated photos, but that's about the current review. A lot of uh, texture sheetrock starting to get painted, color going on the walls. Uh, the left photo, that is your operable partition tracks. Those separate uh, rooms so that they can close them down for smaller rooms, open them up for larger rooms, 21st century learning. Uh, the photo on the left is your front entry canopy, the large canopy. That's actually starting to get skinned uh, with metal panels now and the soffit has been installed as a Monday. <coughs> yesterday. Also, your stairs on the side entry, that would be the east entry, has been completed. On the Dover Hill. So where we're at on Dover, currently installing the stormwater piping all the way around the site. Uh, the domestic water and fire service is starting to be installed as well. They do have the water line bore across Main Street. So that is completed. Uh, rock excavation is starting this week, so I've got a parentheses drilling and blasting. They are actually going to start drilling tomorrow morning and have the first blast at 1.30. It's going to be scheduled for 1.30 every day for the next two weeks. Um, and that's going to be, and when I, when I talk about blasting, it's not going to be flying rock or anything like that. It's very uh, low-key, and that's what it's meant to be. So they drill down 15 feet, set a charge off. If you're driving by, or you probably wouldn't know it. But if you're watching, you may see a cloud of dust underneath the, the blast mat. So they put a blast mat over the top just to make sure there's no fly rock. Uh, they do have intentions of shutting down Maine and Murphy just for that instance that they hit the button, just in case. And they will do that every day for the next few weeks. So, uh, on top of that, <laughs> rock crushing. They're going to start crushing uh, very quickly. Uh, what they have to do because of the blast, and John can attest to this, but they blast down deep so there's nothing flying out. But on top, it's just fractured rock. So they literally have to go in with a hammer and break it up because the chunks are so massive. As they get further down, it kind of rubbleizes. So it's easier to dig on the bottom. But they still have to take the big machines and take it out, make it smaller, put it into the rock crusher. So there's going to be a lot, a lot of action going on in the next two weeks. Updated uh, as of yesterday, so obviously our rocks and remains are going to start. Um, what they will be, we're going to start from the east, closest to Maine, and work towards uh, the west. Um, also, they've taken the 11, the 11 down there uh, today, and they were breaking off a whole lot of pinnacles just to start out cleaning it up. Um, to be able to utilize the rock and the crusher, it has to be clean. You don't want it to have a lot of dirt in it. So they were cleaning up the top portion of the <coughs> rock. I think that's it. Um, we've got our full time. Uh, superintendent is going to be there the rest of the job. He's starting on Monday. Uh, rebar is ready to be delivered for footings. We're going to hold off until the blasting is complete and the rock crush is complete. So we're hoping to get started on footings the second or third week in September. How are we setting time-wise? Are we about where you guys wanted to be? Yeah, yeah, we're looking pretty good on time. Um, you know, from the beginning, the biggest issue was structural steel. And it still is. And even, even on top of that, it's not the large members, it's not the decking, it's the bar joists. Bar joists are the biggest lead time on any construction project right now. It's 40 weeks. So we were able to get that started, the process started pretty 
early big packages where we had the special board meeting. Got that process started. That's still looking like March to get those. We're still hoping for a, uh, a betterment in that. If you remember Kelsey Norman, the exact same thing, only it was 26 weeks at the time. And when we received them, we received them after 19 weeks. So we're hoping that 40 weeks is the worst case scenario. We're going to press forward with footings, with structural steel, with elevated deck on your second floor. We just won't be able to roof the structure until the bar trucks get there. So we're going to press forward. You need someone to come drive that. 11, I thought you just give me more, bud. Today, actually. I think you're going to be blasting for a week, and there's seven of us. What day yeah. can we press the button? It's over quick. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. Yes. <laughs> All right. There's one question. It shouldn't be a big deal. Not if you're using the mats. Um, and I assume you're using all that rock then when you crush it. It's just base rock is all yes. you're using it for, right? We put the building pad, yeah. parking lots, the access road. Yep. Yep. Very good. And what are you crushing it to? I think just the consistency of AV3. Okay. A dirty base. Okay. They've got a bunch of screens. They're actually going to use some of it for riprap mm -hmm. uh, on the detention pond and others they're going to use for the majority of AV3. You want to tell you what riprap is? Yeah. Hey, riprap is a great place to fish. <clears throat> What? The greatest place to fish on a lake. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. It's the big boulders. Okay. So what it does, it protects uh, the outflow sources uh, of a detention pond, for instance, yours, from entering the creek. So it protects it from eroding the wet, larger than stone, slows down the water, doesn't erode. So. Okay. It's heat in the winter. Fish tend to go to that. Even though we've hit a bunch of rock, I, I think it is great that you got creative to say, hey, let's bring a portable crusher on site, let's crush that up, use the base rock, use the rip rack, and that's saving us some dollars. I think I wrote it's 250000 right. um, as opposed to having to bring all that base rock in. So I think you, you guys made the best of a, of a poor situation that on the hand you were dealt. Thank you. Any other questions for him? Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate right. it. Appreciate you. All right. Um, looks like we're up for public comments. Pat, any public comments? Okay. Uh, next up, the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Derek. Um, please vote. Yes. 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 That motion passes. Okay. Regular agenda accounts payable. Shelly. Okay. Um, bringing to you tonight the bill list, which is $5,455,254. Um, that compared to this time last year is um, an increase of a little over $2 million, but most of that is, is in the capital outlay increase of $1.3 million, and, and then health and flex were up a little bit um, this year compared to last year of $500,000. Any questions? I'd make a motion that we pay our bills, Jeff. All right. Thank you, Derek. Second. Thank you, Mike. Been moved by Derek, second by Mike. Uh, please vote. Yes. 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 That motion passes. All right. Uh, the tax levy, <coughs> Shelley, again. Okay. Um, and Eric, if you would bring up the PowerPoint. Yes. Thank you. Um, I already discussed the increased in, in assessed valuation of up over a billion dollars that year, this year. So that was a, a good thing. Um, we are um, seeing, since this is a reassessment year, when you come down through the calculations, the calculation of the operating levy comes out to 2.7329 cents. Um, Missouri does have a uh, operating levy amendment known as amendment two that will allow you to increase without a vote up to the 2.75, which is kind of considered like a, a minimum tax levy. So we are recommending tonight that we we use that amendment to, to go ahead and increase to the 2.75, which will still be less than what we were, uh, we had for our operating levy last year. So um, we would, the debt service part, if you'll go to, uh, yeah, like that one right there was a 2.7329, the calculation. 
the debt service could be 1.095 cents, but we don't necessarily need that. The 0.91 cents of our debt service is adequate to um, cover all of our bond issues. So we are recommending that we would leave that at the 0.91 cents and uh, at the 91 cents per 100 value. It will go on to the next slide there. That is where it comes in and it shows you like the prior year ceiling was the 2.7, 7864, I believe. And when you use that amendment two, that would get us back up to the 275, then plus the 91 cents would come to an overall levy of 3.66 cents, which is less than our prior levy of three point uh, I lost it here. Eight nine. Three point eight. Yeah. yeah. Eight nine six four. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you, Shelley. So, <clears throat> any All questions? Right. Well, we had our special meeting to share with the public, and now, as a board, we need to approve this. So, if there's any questions, I'd open it. A motion that we approve. So, I, I have a question. Yes. So, when you did your calculation to understand that the thirty-eight. Five million is that based on the valuations as they were or as they will be? As on they property? will on they as they will be with the new assessed value. And when we calculated that, we we use a, uh, a the total assessed value of the one point five four million okay. times our three point six six, and then we use a ninety three percent calculation rate for considering delinquencies or, or unpaid uh, collection rate. Yeah, collection rate. Is that 93% standard with what you've used previous year? Yes. So it's an apples to apples? That is, mm -hmm. okay. that's what we've, we've been using that. But historically, our collection rate runs higher than that, yes. but we want to budget conservatively, yes, so we always go with the 93. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask if the, how the 7% got out of it, because I don't know how that's possible in the end. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's already taken, yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, so there's a plus side on this then. Yes. Second. All right, All right, there's a motion by Derek, uh, second by Mike. Please vote. Yes. 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 Okay, that motion passes. Thank you. And then last up, uh, audio visual system, uh, Dr. Sikhan. Dave Pettit's coming up here. Um, North Middle School had been uh, asking for a couple, three years now. Uh, and needing an upgrade for their audio, audio visual equipment in the Performing Arts Center they have there. We have a lot of meetings there. Uh, we've had, for quite some time, we've had the screens up on the high, on the right, and the left. And uh, because of the amount of trainings we do there and an upgrade, we felt necessary to put in a much larger screen with a new projector with it. In this, in there, uh, we have a lot of trainings that go on, as I said, and then also uh, that would help get us on par with some other schools in the district too, as far as that kind of equipment in that they're nice performing arts center. Dave, you want to talk about sure. That? As Dr. Saketa alluded to, this project has been requested for a couple of years, and last year due to COVID, we cut back our capital outlay budget, and it was this was one of the projects that got put on hold, and so we're seeking to move forward with this to move to a single larger screen, a nine foot by 16 foot screen with a single projector. <clears throat> One of the, the best upgrades that we will have with this is to uh, arrange it so an HDI cable hookup is available for a presenter at the front. Currently right now, the presenter either has to sit in the sound booth and talk to everybody without being in front of them, or you have to have Dr. Moss present and she gives you the high sign to change, change screens. And so this will allow uh, more adequate <laughs> uh, opportunities for presentation. And like I said, we hold, uh, as a matter of fact, my department held uh, eight hours of video training there at uh, the tail end of July. And this will allow better visual acuity for that to take place during that time. And uh, um, you have people with cricks in their necks from from watching either one or the other, this will give a, a centerized attention. And so we're seeking to uh, accept a uh, total electronics bid of $17,407. Okay. 
the existing equipment, can that be reutilized in the district or is that salvage? The, What's the, the plan is to, to reutilize the two existing projectors uh, will be taken down and will be reallocated elsewhere for use. And currently we're projecting instead of on a screen, it's on just a plain white wall. Thank you. Motion to approve. All right, thank I'll you, second. Thank you, Eric. Uh, uh, question, uh, questions? Is the, the useful life on some place, but that, that's a pretty good chunk of change. I mean, and, and I know we've, we've had a couple of these seem to pop up and we seem surprised by the cost on them. But when you look at this technology and you look at useful life and you look at obsolescence of technology, I mean, realistically, what's the useful life of this? Well, the existing, we we uh, even though the size of it was probably less than adequate, but we've been in there for what 13 years, and we're still using that technology. But we really would like to upgrade it to make the presentation uh, more accessible. Like I said, those 13-year-old projectors will be able to be reused somewhere else in the district that would be a smaller venue. Uh, so I, I would anticipate probably a 15-year would be reasonable. Okay, and the reason I ask that is if you say, hey, it's a 15-year life. And it's seventeen four as a cost. You're looking at about eleven hundred dollars a year, basically, for the load of the life of this thing. Right. That seems pretty pretty good, right? Pretty yes, very yeah. reasonable. Like I said, uh, food services using it for their meetings. Transportation uses it for three days for their meetings. We use it for a day, as well as the curriculum base of choir, band, drama that are taking place at North. A lot of use, and also if the community comes in and rents the facility, it would be there for that. Yeah, well, that's great. Thank you. Dave. All right. There's no further questions. There was a motion by Mike, a second by Derek. Uh, please vote. Yes. 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 Okay. And that motion passes. Okay. Last up, pluses and deltas. Well, I have a lot. <laughs> I do too. I'm just waiting. I've been making notes. Um, I think it's awesome that our assessed valuation has exceeded a billion dollars. We predicted that that would happen. It's happened a little sooner than we thought it might. And I think it shows that our area is growing and uh, also appreciating. So I think that speaks well for our community. Uh, but also that the board was able to issue a no tax bond issue that was approved last June. And now we're able to roll back our operating levy a bit and it not affect the district adversely at all. So I want to commend Dr. Lankford as well as Shelly and the work that she's carrying forth that has kept us good stewards of those funds and very happy to be able to roll that back three and a half cents. Um, also, I thought our summer school presentation was excellent and I really enjoyed the emphasis that Chris put on the remediation that took place this summer and the, and the success of 95% group. And I think that may foreshadow improvement in student learning over this next school year. And uh, then I appreciated what John said about taking a, a situation with the rock, but trying to make the best of it. So um, thank you for that. I would like to just call out Sue Day again. I think that that's phenomenal uh, to be the, the life changer of the year. Uh, that's just that, that's something that we're just blessed to have people like that in our school district. So that, I just want to recognize I, that. I think again. within 10 seconds of her being awarded that $5,000, she said, give it to the kids. So I mean, that just goes to speak. I, I, it, it's a neat video to see if, if you haven't seen it. So, I mean, she's, she's changed a lot of lives and we'll be able to change still some more even after she's not with us every day. I'd make a motion to uh, adjourn. Second. All right. Motion by Derek. Second by Mike. Please vote. Yes. 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 We're adjourned. Quick. Thank you. Thank you.